It's your girl Rihanna Ari, and I'm back with another Let's Evolve podcast. So today's title is going to be Lack of Faith Equals Failure. And the reason why I chose this podcast is because previously, like throughout maybe the end of my semester at school, a lot of things was happening. Like I didn't have faith. I didn't have hope. I didn't have the joy to do the things that I once loved doing because I allowed so much of disappointment, uh, people validation, approval from people, rejection, all get in the way for me truly and fully seeking who God created me to be as well as to see how beautiful and talented I am throughout dance. So that was really a big, big, big struggle for me by like maybe the last two months within um, the end of my semester. And I feel like it's really good to talk about this because I went through it and I'm excited for you guys to hear what God showed me through his word and what he revealed to me. And I pray that it be helpful for y'all too. So got I'm dandy, handy dandy notes right here okay so first we're going to start off with a scripture as always and the scripture is James 2 um, 26 I'm not sure what translation this is because I didn't write it on here but I will put it on the screen so James 2 and 26 says your lack of faith is what leading is what's leading you to failure right oh snap that is not the scripture y'all that is something i wrote down like as god was revealing to me like your lack of faith is what's leading you to failure meaning if you don't have faith behind anything like anything that god called you to do rather he gave you um a vision about a podcast a vision about starting a youtube channel um, a vision a vision about you know starting a ministry or even um, having a dance company that is evolving God in it like if God gave you a vision for anything and you just felt in your heart like yes Lord this is for me like this this is what I'm called to do and not truly having the faith behind what God is telling you not even believing it it's going to it's going to fail you like you're going to go through so many different trials and tribulations as well as people that's all around you say if you have this big vision you know and you've been praying about it you've been fasting about it and god gave you the answer like this is what i have called you to do even the people that is around you that know these things of you have to be people who is right there behind you if they back you up with faith okay like believing in this thing with you along the journey is what's going to push you but if you have have people you know that you surround yourself with that's like oh I don't think it's gonna come through girl like you crazy God showed you this like you think this is the right way to go you believe like having those type of people have those type of mindset towards something that you're passionate about it will begin to bring down your passion your your passion your hope and your joy you know overall what you believe the God for like this is something that he's called me to do and the fact that you have the people that's right here in your ear is going to start tripping you up like is this really what you called me to do like what's going on Lord like you said I'm supposed to do this but this is happening you said I'm supposed to do this but all of those things is going to overpower the hope and the joy that you have for something and if you don't have hope for something how your faith is going to work hope and faith literally is the same thing faith is meaning that you're putting your faith behind god because he gave you this word he gave you this vision okay i'm going to trust god i'm going to put my faith behind this and i know he's going to do it hope meaning is that regardless of how it goes through how god may handle the situation that's in his hands i'm still going to hope for the outcome it may not be what you want but you're still hoping for such a beautiful outcome that's in god's plan so now now we can read james 2 and 26 because i thought that was the scripture but um it was not the scripture it was me you know saying my own little two cents or whatever 
Okay, so James 2, 26, and this is the NLT version. It says, just as the body is dead without breath. Come on. Just as the body is dead without breath, so also faith is dead without works. Meaning, like I said, you had the vision. Maybe you have the vision. You're like, all right, Lord. So now, since I have this vision, you even gave me this vision. Maybe it's through a dream, through like a movie or something, or you probably writing in your prayer. Whatever it is, you know, God, okay, God shows up and he shows out in many different ways. Now it's time for you to put in the work. It's time for you to pour into whatever God has gave you that vision for. It's time to invest in your money. It's time to invest in your time. It's time to sacrifice you know, hanging from people like, y'all, I got to focus on this. I got to focus on that. This is going to have to go behind. Like, you know, this come first. Now it's time for you to pour into it. As much as God is pouring into you, it's something that he has blessed you with. Whatever he has put in your hands for you to do, now it's time for you to pour into that. So you have to put your faith behind it. Like anything that you want to accomplish, you're going to have to work for it. Nothing is going to come to you. Now, I'm not saying that sometimes it may does. It may just like, boom. One day you're like, dang, Lord, like it came that quick. And some things you're going to have to work for. Everything is not going to be like quick, fast, and a hurry. You have to work for some things. And something that got so personal in this time, because I just knew something was up. Something was more than what I was feeling around my environment, like where I'm at at school. Like, don't get me wrong. I learned everything that I needed from the school that I'm at, but I know where I'm at spiritually, mentally, and what I want to do in life, the school that I'm at, it no longer has anything for me. It like, it doesn't defeat the purpose of why I, you know, wanted to go to school. So I'm like, Lord, I want to transfer. I want to go to a different school. Like I just need I, something just need to be so big and change. And the simple fact that I wanted something so drastic to change. I'm like, Lord, I just want a big change. Like I can't be here no more. Like I just want, I just want a bigger change. And what I had to realize if I sit here and ask God for this drastic change, this big change, am I going to be prepared for that? I may be praying and asking God for this, but would my motives be right if he, send me to this big old school and I just mess it all up, you know, because my motives is not right. And something God showed me in this time where I'm like, Lord, something got to change, something got to change. He like, okay, well, you saying something has to change around your environment, but you're not even changing yourself within. You're not changing your perspective your perspective and what you're thinking right now, even at this school. So how would you expect for me to put place you somewhere bigger than where you at now if you can't even appreciate where you at? You can't even see, you know, the growth. You can't even see the difference that you have made even within, you know, your environment may not be in the best, but are you seeing the positive out of this? And that's something that I was never seeing. And so something that got really, really personal uh, was that I was just writing all of this stuff down as I was getting ready, you know, like this is what I want to talk about because this is something I'm going through. And I had to get personal with myself. I said, it is, it's your lack of faith, Rihanna, that's not getting you anywhere. Build your faith up and rise up. It's time to build your faith. It's time to rise up. Like regardless of like, because what stole my joy and my hope was deception, was defeating, was disappointment, was lack of self-motivation and lack of self-confidence. And it's all because of my thoughts. All because literally you can be your worst enemy when it comes to anything that you want to accomplish. If you're not speaking life over anything that you're doing or you genuinely just love doing, it's going to like it's going to perish. Everything is going to perish because you can't even see for yourself the positive out of it. So I'm like, dang, Lord, this whole time, this is what I've been going through. And it was more things, you know, besides that. But this is just the main focus. So I'm like, oh, man, Lord, what I got to do now? What I got to do? And I've recently been watching Mike Jr., Pastor Mike Jr. I think his last name is McClure, something like that. And I've been watching this series where it says the greatest, the greatest gift of hope. And he was just speaking about how many different things can just take away your hope and your joy. 
And one thing he kept saying, I have my hope back. I have my hope back. I have my joy back. And I've been saying that consistently. And not only just saying I have my hope, I have my joy back, but I'm I'm fighting to get it. You know, I'm not just sitting here like, okay, Lord, like I got my hope. I want my joy back. But now I'm not even putting the work in to get to get where I want to get, to enjoy dance once again, to begin my platform, to be consistent on YouTube, to have these ideas, to have these visions. I have to motivate myself and I have to keep going. I have to keep pushing. So literally after God showed me every single thing, I'm like, all right, Lord, it's time to put in work. And that's exactly what I've been doing. It has not been such a big change, but I'm making the small steps. It's literally the smallest the smallest things ever that would just I don't even know how to explain it but it would give you such the motivation that you need if you just start small you don't have to start so big because you're like oh I want to change I want this it can all start start very small it's the literally the smallest things that you have to pay attention to because if you don't pay to the smallest things of where it may get you then you're gonna kind of you're gonna kind of miss the message. Like if I didn't know it was myself with such of the negative thoughts that I was thinking, I probably would have never been in that situation because my perspective, my mind was renewed and it was changed. That reminds me of Romans twelve two. Yes, Romans twelve two. Because my mind wasn't renewed each and every day, each and every minute, second in time, I allow my thoughts to overpower the word of God. And that's something, oh, God is so good. That's something that he showed me. In that season, I wasn't fully relying on his word. I wanted to rely on my own word, my own strength, my own perspective, and not relying on his word. So my words and my feelings, my thoughts and emotions got in the way of his. So yeah. So I feel like I kind of rambled with that, but we're going to go ahead and go back. Um, also, one of the um, one of the next notes I wrote, when you don't have faith behind anything you're trying to accomplish, it won't work. Everything that you, regardless if you a believer or not, if you're working towards something, you have to work towards it. If you have a goal, like for instance, my car. Mind you, I wanted a car last year, but it didn't go as planned. So when this year came about, you know, my auntie, she was like, all right, we're going to try to work on getting you a car this summer. You know, all of this extra stuff and try our best to find something. And I'm like, Lord, like, I, don't get me wrong, y'all. I was really eager to get a car. I'm like, Lord, I want my car now. I want it now. I don't want to wait. I want it now. But even in that time, he showed me, you need to slow down. You need to be patient because everything is on my timing. And so after that, I said, all right, Lord, it's in your hands. If I get my car this summer or not, I'm still going to be grateful because you're still showing me things. Because I don't want to be blessed with something. And then I get that blessing and I start using it for the wrong reasons. So that's why I really just took a step back. I'm like, all right, Lord, you're right. It's in your hands. And as I was just taking time to, you know, look around for cars, you know, me and my auntie, we was both looking around to find me something. And we found a couple of things and it wasn't right. I said, okay, move to the next. And then I was finally blessed, you know, with my car. My car is not brand new, like it ain't fresh off the lot, you know, but I have something. I was blessed with something, something that I've always wanted. Now I have my own transportation. I don't have to ask people around. And I'm so blessed for my car. Don't get me wrong. My car, it be having all type of complications because, you know, it's not a new car. It's a used car. But even though it have all of these complications, I get this. I, my car is still running. I can still get up and go somewhere if I needed to because I have a car. I have transportation, something that I'm blessed with. And I'm, I'm so grateful for it because it just showed me what patience looked like, what trust in God looks like, literally. And with me in that season, just trusting him, I don't know how many months it was, maybe like three months. And I was just being patient. I'm like, all right, Lord, it's in your hands. And if I don't have it, I'm not going to be too mad because it's in your hands. It's not in mine. And something else that pointed out to me in the beginning where I was talking about everything is you have to work for it. Nothing is going to come to you unless you work for it. 
And so that reminds me of Proverbs 21, 5. And Proverbs 21, 5, I think it's the NLT version. Oh, Proverbs 21, 5, it says, good planning and hard work, it leads to prosperity. You hear the beginning, good working and hard planning. No, I think it's good planning and hard working. There we go. Good planning and hard working leads to prosperity. Meaning that if you have it all planned out, all right, boom, Lord, here go all my plans, here go the list of everything that I want. Now, since this is the list, I'm going to pray for it and put it in your hands. Now, since I gave you this, Lord, I'm going to allow you to lead me, but I'm going to still work in the midst of it. Even though God may be doing everything behind the scenes, I'm still going to put work into it i'm still going to take time to find a job that i know that will be beneficial for where i want to be in my career i'm going to go to these dance classes you know and build up my confidence and go to these um um dance auditions just to go to have fun regardless if i make it but i'm going to continue to keep pushing and motivating myself to get where god needs me to get because if i'm not working towards where god needs for me to be i ain't gonna get there unless i'm working towards it right so it says good good planning and hard work it leads to prosperity but hasty hasty shortcuts meaning that you're finding the easy way to get where you want to get and with you trying to find the easy way to get where you're going to get, you're not going to like it. And it ain't going to last long because you wanted to get it so quick and fast and in a hurry. But if you take your time with planning and working hard, you're going to get there, right? So I'm like, okay, Lord. So um, I'm putting all this stuff together. Boom, right? Something that really stuck out to me was Proverbs 16 and 9. And I read this yesterday. God is so good. God is so good. Proverbs 16, 9 says, this is the NLT version. It says, we can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. I'm going to read it one more time. We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps, right? So a note that I wrote down, write your vision and allow God to bring it to life. Write your vision and allow God to bring it to life. And this reminds me of Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, declares the Lord. Jeremiah 29, 11. And so as I'm sitting here reading this, I'm like, dang, Lord, all I had to do was put everything in the plans. I had to, I should have planned everything out and allow you to lead and guide me. And something else that I learned within this season where I was trying to figure out what other schools that I wanted to go to in the midst of me feeling like this, like, Lord, I got to go, something has to give. I literally allowed God to lead me. Like the school that I've applied for that I wanted to transfer to, um, you know, I sent them my transcripts. I'm like, okay, she was like, you know, eventually we're gonna email you and let you know how things will go if you wanted to transfer, you know, as a social worker, because I'm a dance major and a social work minor. And so with the school that I wanted to transfer to, they don't have dance there. So I'm like, dang, Lord, like I'm, I'm halfway done with my dance degree. So do I just want to stay here, finish it off strong? take what I got and take it somewhere else and do social work, you know, in grad school? Or do I just want to waste all of the time that I took, the trials, the tribulations, come on, the trials and the tribulations, the crying, the upsetting, the feeling like I wasn't going to get there. Take all of that and just throw it away because I feel a certain way. And I had to sit back and think like, no, nah, Lord, I'm not going to do that. We're going to finish off strong because... God showed me so much, even at this school, trying to get my degree, what I've been going through, how I've been feeling about this. And even though the fact that I've been going through all this, God has still been showing up in so many different ways for myself to where I can't even give up on that. Like, I have, like I'm, I'm fighting for it, okay? I'm going to keep pushing and working hard. And so after that, I'm like, dang, Lord, all I have to do is just put everything in your hands and just trust the full process and not allow so much of what I think is right for me to get in the way. And also another scripture that, that really, ba that backs up 16, 9 is um, in the first verse of Proverbs chapter 16. And the first verse says, we can make our own plans, but the Lord gives the right answer. So regardless of whatever we may have, God is going to give us the plan, the vision, the outcome, the people, the opportunities, the jobs. He's going to lead us to where we need to be to get 
to get there. But in order for us to get there, we have to trust. We have to believe. We have to believe and trust and put our faith behind everything. Well, we should walk by faith and not by sight. So regardless of what we're seeing around us, what is in front of us, we can't we can't see that as like the full goal, the full destination. We have to see without our eyes. We have to see in God's vision to change our perspective. You have to have faith behind everything that you believe in. What you believe in yourself, who you are, and I feel like I still struggle with seeing who I genuinely am. Genuinely am as a woman of God, someone who is not perfect with her life, someone who just continuing to progress, continuing to grow, continuing to genuinely live such a holy life. I'm not perfect. I'm not. I have days where I I lack. I have days where I fall. But with me just holding on to God and knowing that God is my main source, he gets me up. Even though I may fall, I still get up. And this is just me showing my transparency. Like y'all may, y'all may think my life, oh my goodness, she be smiling. Y'all, I go through it. Okay. Living for God is not easy. But overall, this whole topic is just put your faith in God. Something that stuck out to me yesterday when I was reading Proverbs chapter 16, your time is coming. I heard that so loudly. Your time is coming. Whatever you're waiting for God to do, what he has promised you, it's coming. Like, it, it's coming. I don't know when it's coming. I don't know when it's coming for me, coming for you. But just know that your time is coming. What you've been waiting for. For God is going to open the door, open the blessings for you. And the same for me, the same for all of us. And so we just have to be patient and we just have to, you know, wait. But something I just want to encourage you guys with, and this is just something I wrote down, just allowing my thoughts to just, you know, come out and also a scripture. So I said, it's time to build up your faith in God and what he has gifted, promised and blessed you with. Stop allowing your own ability to get in the way of God ability, okay? Our ability and strength is, is completely different from God's, okay? It's not out of your strength, but out of God's strength that you rely on. And the scripture that I want to leave you guys with is Ephesians um, 3 and 20. And this is the NCV version. I've never used this version before, but it was in my notes. So it says, with God's power working in us, keyword in us, God can do much, much more than anything we can ask or imagine. So just imagine just putting everything like, Lord, boom, here you go. Here go, the, here go this bag. You give it to him. You do what you need to do with it. And it's all of him working within us. And if we just allow him to do that, we will be able to prosper. We will be able to be in abundance, joy, hope, blessings, you know? Not only just will we be so abundant with everything that we need, but those around us will be as well. But I genuinely hope that this video bless you guys. I pray that, you know, these words was very encouraging, not only just for myself, but for you guys. And know that it's okay to go through those hardships because when you go through the hardest ships ever, that be the most time God reveals so much. Like, it's always good. I love my good, okay? Praise the Lord for everything that good has happened to me. But also praise God for the bad things that happen because you truly see who God is and he shows you how to rely on him and his word. If you guys enjoyed this podcast, make sure you guys like comment and subscribe okay also follow me on all of my social medias oh my instagram changed my instagram name it changed to my actual name and i also put that in the description box as well but yeah y'all i love y'all and i will see y'all in my next video